Welcome to another hour of Gate City Chronicles, the weekly magazine dedicated to the city of Nashua. Today's show is sponsored by Nashua Steam Cleaning and Art Bark, the Dean of Clean. Our goal is to introduce you to local businesses, local artists, local causes, and uh, reach out and uh, bring these causes and these people into your home. And today I have a very, very special guest, uh, Mr. Tim, Jim T. Jim T, right? Jimmy T is fine. Jimmy Jim Tomaszewski, but everybody calls me Jimmy T. Tomaszewski. Right? Yeah. And uh, you have a very, I wouldn't call it a ministry, but you have a very, in, uh, uh, you're involved in the community with little iguanas. Yeah. And you have your own uh, way of reaching out and, and helping out. And, and I'd really love you to talk about this. Sure. Absolutely. I thank you for having me. It's a great show. Um, Little Iguana, we're a 17 year nonprofit group that's been saving children for, oh, 17 years plus, you know. Um, we go into schools, we have television, we have live shows, products, educational programs. We actually save kids ages two through eight from abduction, sexual abuse, uh, serious injuries, child predators, you know, accidental preventable things. And it's all common, you know, it's all out there for the the kids to use in, a, in, a, in an easy way, easy format to follow. Right. Nowadays, it seems like every time you turn on the television, there's a, a child being abducted from a home or the Penn State, oh, gosh, on yeah. and yeah. on and on and on. Yeah. And so basically, uh, what you're doing is you're taking a proactive approach. Sure. Yeah, it prevention can... programs instead of reaction programs. Because everything right now that's set up in this, in our society right now is reaction. Mm -hmm. Fingerprint identification cards, you know, Amber Alert bills, all of them are all great programs for reactive, you know, fingerprint identification cards. What were they made for originally? To identify dead bodies, not, not to save a child. Right. And we don't even use fingerprints when that happens. We use DNA. Right. So basically it's a $50 million a year business industry plus, you know, and um, it, it, it needs to be proactive like us. We go into schools where we tell children what to do in case something happens. You know, like, uh, what is permission? How many, do you have children? Yes. Okay. How many times have we told our kids, look both ways before you cross the street? I've lost count. Okay. Or don't talk to a stranger. Or don't do this or don't. Have we ever taken the time to show them? What does that mean to a two or three year old? Absolutely nothing. You know, more children die every year from accidental injuries than every disease combined. Preventable, simple education would have taken care of 90% mm -hmm. of those, you know, those deaths or injuries. So we're the proactive, we're the prevention group. Well, let's back up a little bit. How did you get involved with all this? 17 years you've been doing this now. What was the, uh, the impetus for this? Well, this is, this is my tearjerker, my tipping point in life. Um, many years ago, I owned a screen print embroidery shop on East Hollis Street. And we had a character that created Little Iguana originally. You know, it, it, it's come a long way. It, it looked nothing like what it did in the beginning. It's called evolution. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it was evolutionized, right. trust me. Right. <laughs> and um, one day... There, there was a story. Little Iguana was being used by the task force for the prevention of child abuse. A, a wonderful woman named Monique Devine got a group of people together and said, could we use Little Iguana to help educate our kids? Because all of our programs aren't working. We need to talk to our kids. And we need to deliver a message where they can understand it. So they started using it. And then the task force decided to change their mission. They were, instead of teaching young kids, they wanted to go after teaching first-time moms. And so they were thinking about getting rid of the program. It must have been that day, God looking out for us or whatever people believe in. Um, my son Jim was standing in one of those Rubbermaid buckets that the boy Jeffrey Curley from Cambridge, Massachusetts, who was killed and put into a bucket and then thrown into a river, was actually you know, put in and they had discovered his body in Maine. So my son's standing there in this in this bucket, looking up at me, five years old, goes, Daddy, why did those men do that to that boy? And I looked at him and I said, what are you talking about, Jim? What, what men? What, what boy? And he goes, that little boy that's on the, on the TV. He was talking about Jeffrey Curley, who was in the blue baseball outfit, blue cap, the bat on his, on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
and I just, the hair, and even now today, hair stood up on my neck. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my, Jim, I don't know why those men did that to that poor little boy. And he said, you wouldn't let that happen to me or Erica at the time. I only had two children. And I thought to myself, there would be no way I would be able to save him because right. I wasn't there. So he said... That's a lot to process at oh, that age. Oh, because that's what kids see. They see it on TV. They see it on the news. They see... Right. And you're watching Wheel of Fortune. All of a sudden, the story comes up on it. And what happens to the kids? Gosh. They absorb it. They're sponges. And he said, <clears throat> would, would, would you be able to save me and Erica if that happened to us? And I just said, I don't know, Jim. And then this is the tipping point. This, this is what changed my whole life. And if you ever read the book, The Tipping Point... There's something in your life that just snaps and changes you. He tries to curl his body into the bucket, to fit into the bucket. And he looks up at me and he says, Daddy, that boy was so much bigger than me. I can't even fit in this bucket. How did they fit him in this bucket? And all I could think of is at that time, that was my son who was actually going to be there, taking the place of Jeffrey, who would have been gone from me. So I went home. <laughs> And, and, and talk to my wife who, you know, thank God she supports us through the bad and the good. And um, she said, yeah, let's, let's try this. So we created a program called Little Iguana and started going out with a little boom box and music. And it grew to a stage show. Then it grew to a television series, won some Emmys, and now it's in, I don't know, seven different countries across the United States. I mean, seven different countries, including across the United States. So it's, it's evolved, I guess. Mm. It's, a, it's a lot to process and a lot, to, a lot for a kid to process. Uh, I, I remember when I was a, a dad in uh, my early years, just putting the kids while in daycare yeah. While I was going to church, uh -huh. uh, I was I was a nervous nilly. Sure, uh, I, it was years before we allowed babysitters. Yep, uh, and it it's uh, the thought of somebody even approaching my child uh, at, at that point was I was very defensive. Sure, uh, well you should be. I yeah. mean, you ever take you ever take the time to go onto the internet and put your address in, and then go, okay. Go into that crime watch or that uh, or that child, you know, registration, the the registered list of all the offenders, right. the, the offense list, and you you type in your address, and all of a sudden you see red dots. We, we've done that everywhere. Yeah. Red dots. This is this is Nashua. Could you imagine the bigger cities and the other cities? If you can if you can type in your address and no red dots pop up anywhere near you, then you're all set. Right. <laughs> but right now in the United States. There's 700,000 registered sex offenders that walk the streets. For every one of them, the government says there's 10 that we I, don't know about. That are transient. That, well, we don't know about. The, uh, so right. there's 7 million that they're saying. But the transient, you know, you, you get into that point. Out of the 700,000, there's 250,000 that the government has no idea where they're at. They, they lost track of them. Like when the hurricane happened and, and just it just... Every day they leave, right. and they're not looking to register. I, I noticed uh, O'Reilly had a, a, a segment uh, just recently. Of, I think yep. it was in Colorado that the governor is having a difficult time uh, or, or, or refusing to, to prosecute some of these uh, sex offenders uh, to the utmost. Sure. And, uh, I, yeah, I, because we don't, we don't look, unfortunately, in this society, we don't look at children as, as, as we should. They're the most purest, the, 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 the most perfect kids, you know, things. And what we do is we treat them like property. <clears throat> Judges or right. courts, you can see your kid every Wednesday and every other weekend if you want. I mean, what is that to a kid growing up? Yeah. I mean, we, we should treat our children. You make a crime against the most innocent, you should have the strictest penalty. You should have the strictest penalty. Because when you, you hurt a child, you hurt them pretty much for life. Correct. For instance, if if you uh, if you ever watch that show uh, Intervention, and yes, yeah. we always uh, Tracy and I always say, you know what, I I, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, that one was abused, that one was abused, and sure enough, sure. that seems to be about eighty to ninety percent of the time that the that the children somehow were either sexually abused by by uh, a neighbor or an uncle or 
a predator. Absolutely. Uh, and and the the lasting damage, it's it's a lifetime that they have to process. They have to shed the guilt. They have to shed the. That's just for the people that survive. Correct. Uh, Correct. So, what about the ones that you you know? <laughs> this this belief that there's aliens abducting our children. That's not what's happening. It's people that are doing ill to our children, and we don't ever feed, you know we don't ever see them again. We don't find them again, and it, and it's it's should not happen. It should never happen. Okay, so you, let's talk a little bit of, uh, again how, how your program is a little bit different than the other programs out there. You, you said that you do take a proactive sure. s step. You have a TV show. Uh, what is a typical TV show? Uh, or, or, for instance, if you go to the schools, what, what's a particular? Live stage show? Yeah. Okay, well, live stage show, basically what we do is we come in, we bring in our costume characters and our performers, and what we do is we start out by inviting children in the audience to participate with us up on stage. So we'll teach things about what get permission means. What is permission? People, you know, people make it simple, as simple as possible. Get a yes before you go anywhere. Who's a stranger? Everybody's a stranger, even if you know them. Everyone's a stranger. This way the children don't have to figure out, is the next door neighbor? Is it the ice cream man? Everybody's a stranger unless you have permission. So if you don't have a yes, everybody's a stranger. Takes you don't the go questions with them. right out of it. Takes any, any question out of it, any guesswork out of it. You know, for a two-year-old, you know, we've gone into programs. We've gone into schools. We've gone into uh, um, giant community events. We've had children as young as two years, 11 months that were tied up and sexually abused. And because of the Harm Alarm program, because Little Iguana was in the school, came forward, and was able to tell people what happened to them. Children that were 16, that when they were eight years old, saw the live stage show, took part in the Run, 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 Yell, and Tell program. A level three sex offender tries to pull them into a car and take them. Not for ice cream, not to take them out to the ball game, to take them. And because she remembered the show when she was in second grade, eight years old, that song, she, as she said to the police and to her mother and to, to the people that were, were at the meeting, she goes, that stupid song, Run, 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 Yell and Tell, came into my head, and right. she acted it out. But she was able to escape this, this, this guy who was trying to take her. They found him two towns over, and they arrested him because he's a six-time convicted sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to take a look sure. uh, at, uh, at a clip here, and then sure. uh, we're going to go to a break, and then we'll yeah. be right back. Awesome. Sounds great. Now, before we go anywhere and do anything, do you know what we have to get from mom or dad or whoever's watching us? Do you know what it's called? Do you know what it's called? Do you know? What is it? Permission. That's right. Now, let's pretend that Papa John was on the telephone. Can you pretend you're on the telephone for me, John? And he's talking on the phone, and I say, see you later, Dad, I'm going outside. Bye-bye, I'll talk to you later. Did I just get permission, little iguana? No. What am I supposed to do, little iguana? I'm supposed to look him right in the eyeballs. And I go to him and I say, hey, Dad. And then when he acknowledges me, he can get off the phone and say, Yes, greatest suck in the world, what would you like? And I would say, can I go outside and play? And if he says yes, did I get permission? Yeah. And that's the only time we want to go anywhere, especially if somebody wants you to go with them. Even if you know that person, we got to get what? Yeah. All right, you guys ready? All right, well, we're going to bring our hoedown crew out here. And this song is called Get Permission. You guys ready to line up? All right, let's see how they do it, guys. Take it away, everybody. Put your hands together. Here we go.
And we're back. Uh, thank you for joining us again. We have uh, uh, Mr. Jim T. Please say the last name again. <laughs> Tomaszewski. Tomaszewski. Yeah. Tom it's okay. It took till the fourth grade. I had a name tag on me till the fourth grade, so well, it's okay. Don't I did graduate it. from the fourth grade, I think. <laughs> Tomaszewski. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and you're with the Little Iguanas, and we were, we just saw a clip on the uh, the, uh, the shows that the uh, live stage show. The live yep. stage shows. Yep. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit again about your outreach from Nashua and how it spreads out throughout the uh, Hillsborough County, maybe throughout the state, and uh, we'll move on from there. But sure. uh, r actively right now, you're, you're engaged in uh, um, the schools. Yes. Right? Do you have a schedule? Any, any school that actually um, asks, we do, we do our programs free of charge. Mm -hmm. So anybody that needs our program, what they do is they uh, send in an email and then we'll follow back up with it. And then we set up the programs based on, you know, the need in the areas. We try not to saturate certain areas because limited revenue, obviously, in right. funds. Um, so we, we take in the request, you know, we just did one in West Stewartstown, the principal, Lydia. I mean, this is the reach that we have in this state. I mean, that's, that's on the Canadian border. We, we didn't know this at the time, you know. We get in our car and four and a half hours, we're still driving. And we show up in West Stewartstown and uh, the principal, Lydia Johnson, had uh, requested our program because um, that, that girl, Selena Cass, was murdered up there this past summer. And all the children are afraid. So they wanted something to help the kids. So we went up there, uh, did a show, spent some time with the kids, gave them all kinds of great educational products, our music. Every kid got our music, our videos. Um, and then she, she said it was such a great, great response. Kids are walking through the halls. They're feeling better. It was a great uplift for us in our program. But yeah, we go everywhere in the state. Okay. Uh, Maine through New Jersey is our live stage show. This year we just did um, some shows in uh, West Palm, Florida and Miami, Florida per request. We were flown down there to do some shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a big um, festival that they had. Lots of people, tens of thousands of people. And um, soon, hopefully, every state will put in a chapter. That's our goal. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Have you... In Nashville, they have a great uh, girls and boys club. Have you gone to places like that as well? Uh, we've done shows at the girls and boys club. We've done shows at the Y's. We've done shows at uh, 
community events, um, outdoor, indoor. We host our own. We have a, a giant festival coming up February 25th at Nashua South High School. Okay. It's a family fun day. You just come and have fun. You, you play in the jump houses. You run around. You, you, you have all different health areas, vendor, you know, tables where yeah. businesses promote what they do, and then they're having a craft at every table. Uh, there's so much fun. You, they they got to show up and have fun. Well, I met you at the Holly Day Fair. Oh, uh, Holly the Day. The Holly Day Fair yeah. at the Broad Street School. Yes. Yeah. And I saw the big uh, lizard there. Or the oh, yeah. Is You're, it the lizard? Is it an iguana? It's an iguana. It is yeah. an iguana. Yeah. That's a big because iguana. Because there was, at the time, you know, there was... There was bears and dinosaurs and dogs, but there was no iguanas. So we wanted to pick a character, you mm -hmm. know, something that people, you know, um, didn't have out there. Right. So we went to the we went to the pet store. And we're, we're like, "What's your biggest selling pet?" And at the time, it was the Jurassic era. You know, Jurassic Park right. had just come out, and all yeah. those those dinosaur movies. And he goes, "It's the iguana, believe it or not." <laughs> so we went home and we said, "Hey, iguana, why not?" Yeah. You know, so nobody confuses you for Geico or anything like well, that. Well, they confuse us now. That people, you know, people are funny. They yeah. call a green iguana Barney still. So I mean, come on. <laughs> Somehow, I think I heard that name yeah. be shot out. That's a green. Yeah. <laughs> now I saw that the, the little kids they just delighted oh, yeah. in, in the uh, in the um, iguana and uh, the little girls wouldn't let them go at that event. You yeah, know? they they just well they we just created started. it to make the eyes and the color. I mean, there was a lot of thought into this. I mm -hmm. mean, it was um, years of you know universities helping us and colleges and specialists that you know it it we picked the right look and. The kids, they, they do love it. That one little girl that was there, her mother had to take her out of there screaming and kicking because she wanted just to have little Iguana come home with her. Who writes your songs? Um, well, you know, we have a few people that write our songs. Right now, what, what, what the process for music is, what I want to teach, I'll actually put down the thoughts, <clears throat> all, the, all the lessons that need to be taught, and then I'll turn it over to... Um, uh, a musician or a writer or a poem, and they'll put it into a poem format. Okay. And then what we do is we actually create the music, and then we give it to a lot of the parents in our focus you know, groups. Because if parents don't like the music, the children will never hear it. Right. So we make the music so that parents like it, and it's also appealing to children. And then we'll put the words and the lyrics to it because people don't really listen to words and lyrics, lyrics and songs. I mean, how many times you're in a car driving down and you're singing Benny and the Jets different right. than the other five people exactly. that are singing Benny and the Jets, right. you know? But so. you know what? The, the kids listen <laughs> to the words. kids do. The kids listen Correct. to the words. That's why it's all focused for, you know, number I, one way to teach a kid is through music. Oh, I made the mistake years ago. I was, uh, I was cleaning up a, a place in uh, Concord and there was a music class going on. And uh, the music teacher let me come in, and uh, because I'm a singer, yeah. And she said, uh, "Would you like to teach us a song?" And I just made one up, and I, I wish I hadn't, <laughs> because it was it was kind of gross. Uh, hey, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm a picking my nose, and then I'm a chewing. <laughs> and the kids throughout the rest of the year, hey, there's this Mr. Avard, and he's singing, "I'm picking my nose," and and it was, and, and she looked at me with such disdain, but. Uh -huh. it, I, it, it, the, the message was powerful, sure, and it's stuck in their mind. And if if you can get a message across, music has got to be one of the best vehicles to do it that. It is. It's it's actually been proven that music's the number one way to teach any lesson to anything. Mm. And then the number the second way is interactive role playing. So that means actually showing them what you mean. Like when I was growing up, and, and being dads, you know, you get the you get the instructions with the bicycle. And you end up with 27 extra parts at the end of it, and you have to bring it to somebody to fix it, or you get your 14 year old to do it. Right. Because we're not, we're not learn, we don't learn that way. We, we're not very good at that as human beings. Right. But if you show me how to build that bike, physically show me how to build the bike, I can spit them out all day long. Right. So that's the whole concept of what we found out. We use the music, we use interactive role playing. So we actually show you, you know, when a kid comes up onto the stage, we tell them, look left, look right, look left again, in a funny way. We do it in a, it, we use a lot of humor in our program. And then we reinforce it with music right after that so that the children got the message, then they learned, then they reinforced it with song, and they never forget it. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't do this in a vacuum. You don't do this all by yourself. You have to no. have volunteers. Yeah, we have a huge <laughs> staff of three, and then we have another. <laughs> then we have How another. How do you keep track of them all? Oh, I know, huh? We just have three great people right. that help lead our four people. And then we have about 20 or so good volunteer, good core volunteers mm -hmm. that are, you know, the people that get into the show. And if it wasn't for, like, my family, in the beginning, um, we had outsiders that did our programs. And um, I never saw my family, actually, you right. know, because we're on the road all the time. And then my kids wanted to get involved and. Thank God they did, and then my wife helps so much. And what we've done was we've been able to put a really good show out there. And I mean, we do shows as big as four hundred thousand people over the course of two days with Disney, to you know ninety thousand people with Channel Seven where their health and fitness fair, you know, uh, main stage kids event, you know. So I mean, we we do huge events, and then and then you do programs at Head Start, you know, right. L Nashua or somewhere else where there's 10 kids, you know, so it doesn't really matter the size. And so how are people getting in contact with you? How are they getting, is it through the, uh, you have a... Internet, telephone, Internet. you know, that, that, that's our big way. 2012, what we're going to do is actually take a different approach. We're, we're going to bring in what we need, the investment to, to create something um, to expand the reach of Little Iguana because mm -hmm. right now we, we just got to, we, we just received a request to be the safety program in Hamilton, Ontario. How they found out about us, we don't market. <laughs> so how they found out about right. us is they really researched every program that's out there for kids. And the one that they chose was Little Iguana. Excellent. And we've been shipping stuff all over the country and then, like I said, in other countries. So people are finding us. They're looking for the best children's educational in the safety field, right. and they're choosing us. Oh, that's that's quite an honor. It now, sure is. Speaking of sure honors, yep. you said you uh, tons of awards. Really? Oh yes, yes, yes. We've we uh, have won Emmys. We have won international awards. We have won educational program, the best children's program. Um, how we do it, I don't know. I mean, uh, now, I really awards don't know. awards should be given out instead of uh, you know. There's all kinds of global war. Global, oh sure. Global, yep. yeah, whatever the, the Golden Globes and Golden all that Glo kind of yep. stuff. Yeah. This stuff has a, a value to it that, that, oh, that's yeah. serving the people, and it's just not, uh, it, um, well, I don't have the know, words for it, that. Unfortunately, children's safety is not a priority to a lot of people. And let me give you an example of this. And I'm not putting down the organizations. I'm not putting down anybody. But the, the, the Little Iguana was up for an award locally, and we were invited to come and participate in this award ceremony where there's other groups out there in the world that are, you know, participating in this. We sat there and we had some volunteers that put their heart and soul into this program. I mean, all the time doing this for nothing. And we lost out to the first one, the first person that won, it was a, they drop off dogs to elderly so that they can pet them. Don't get me wrong, it's a great program, okay? Right. But I'm just saying how you put things into perspective on what's rated more important. Saving the life of a child. And then the, the other two, one of them was a, a little girl that was raising money to feed a giraffe at a zoo. We didn't even, we didn't even come close to those two. I mean, yeah. you sit here and you, you, know, you think to yourself, why is it that, you know, it, it, you know, you need a license to have a dog. You need a license to drive a car. You need a license to do all these things. But anybody can have a kid. And when things go wrong, that person, they take the kid away, and the, kid, the person can have another kid. And until they do something wrong to that kid, they, you know, and, and we cheated. it. I think what we need to do is really step back and understand, like you said, when something happens to a child, all that's left is an empty shell. Right. There's nothing left. They go, it, it's proven that it, it, it increases drug use, suicide, alcoholism, unwanted pregnancies, because they're looking for that love that was taken from them, okay? Something that was stolen from them, they go, oh, I'm going to have another kid. Oh, that didn't work. And it's not just women. It's men that do this, obviously, because, you know, it, it, 
There, there is no, you know, uh, uh, Mother Mary's out there, whatever, you know. I mean, you need to have two people. And all these people that have been just made into empty shells right. are walking our streets. And they're looking for love. Being a survivor of this stuff, you know, we talked a little bit before the show about uh, the Catholic Church. And, you know, it's not just that. It, it's human beings, first off. Then it's, you know, it could be your coach. It could be your teacher. It could be your uncle. It could be whatever it is, okay? There's problems in the world. And what we need to do is we need to step up to the plate and say, we need to save our children. Right. Because there's a lot of us out there that, you know, there's two paths you can take. One, you can continue to do it and say, oh, it happened to me. Or you can be a big boy and put on your big boy pants and say, you know, it really stunk and it shouldn't happen to anybody and I'm going to help and right. I'm going to stop that. And that's what we need to do. Now, you have a television program as well. Yep. It's, yeah. it's on local access? It's on local access. Okay. Love it. Channel 96, 99, every, it's, it's great. We love it. Every week they, get the, they run it and... Uh, We've been blessed. We, we actually, our, our TV show was in uh, a few countries now, and it, it actually went on PBS. Funny story about this. When we started, you know, we, we had gone to uh, uh, PBS, <laughs> thinking, you know, hey, PBS, man, you know. They love children. children. <laughs> right? Hey, here we go. You know, people <laughs> say, why don't you take a bigger reach, you know, get on television. So we got on, you know, went down to PBS, got on the suit and tie, and walked in there and said, hey, we got this great program for you. It teaches kids about safety. They said, safety? Teaching safety? This ain't going to happen. You know, I mean, a, a, a verbal throw you out of the office kind yeah. of thing. So we said, you know what, we're, we're going to get back at them. So we went to 87 television stations. The 88th one was John Silver's group. They owned Boston. They, he was the president of Boston University. Okay. And they oh, yeah. owned WABU on Soldiers Field Road way back when. And a few others, the Concord Station and uh, Cape Cod Station. And he goes, you know, kid, I like, this. I like this idea. They made us 14 television shows. It saved us a million and a half dollars. Wow. They produced this show. So come, we're up for these Emmys. And we're sitting there. And the table next to us is all the producers that threw us out of their office at PBS. And... The winner of the the winner of the Emmys go to Little Iguana, and it was such a great revenge. It was so funny yeah. because at that time, you know, we had won a lot of awards, and okay. because people believed in what we did, Leslie University, Boston University. I mean, these aren't stupid people, oh, you know, not. and they know that th this has to be done. Well, let's let's take a look uh, at a clip at uh, one of uh, your TV sure, shows, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll get right back. I feed my cat, but I never take a bath with my baseball. Well, um, I don't take a bath with a baseball either. So silly. It's a rhyming game. Can you get the last word? Well, um, let's hear it again. Hi, little iguana. Hi, oh. Allie. Hi, CK. Hi, Hi Ken. Ken. Hi. We're doing a rhyming game. Want to hear it? Oh, sure. Rhyming games are fun. Here it is. <clears throat> I wear my hat when I feed my cat, but I never take a bath with my baseball bat. Right. I never take a bath with my baseball bat. Oh, I should hope not. That's a silly one. You're all silly. Here's another. <clears throat> I'd like to share. It's always fair. But I never take a bath with my teddy... Bear! That's good. 
Lots of things not to take a bath with. Yeah, teddy bears like to stay dry. They sure do. Now, do you have another one? Yep. Try this. <clears throat> when I'm awake, I love to bake, but I never take a bath with a birthday cake. Yeah, you got it. So silly. A birthday cake and a bath. Yucca. Hmm. Well, thank you for bringing that clip in. Uh, no problem. Very good. Yeah, it airs on 96. Every, uh, every Saturday and Sunday they have it on 90, 99, 96, both of those stations. And it, it's geared for the children. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yep. Uh, so talk, let's talk about Hollywood here. Apparently you've been to Hollywood. You've uh, been embraced a little bit by Hollywood. I know yeah. you mentioned Disney. Yeah, well, there's a lot. Radio Disney actually uses our program. You know, we used to travel a lot with Radio Disney throughout New England and you know, Rhode Island and Boston, and we did a lot of shows with them. Uh, like I was saying, the, the biggest show we did was uh, 2000, the Tall Ships 2000. There was uh, 400,000 people that came from all over the world, and there were so many pictures taken with Little Iguana. It, you know, you'll, you'll see Japan and China and Sweden, and it just was uh, overwhelming how many people loved it. But uh, Hollywood itself, if you go onto our YouTube site, Mm -hmm. and uh, you, you just go right to YouTube and type in Little Iguana, L-I-L, -L, and then Iguana, you'll see, like, the Thalians did a special with us. Mary, Mc, um, Mary McDonough, I think it is, or some, something like that, from Little House on a Prairie. She played the middle, oh, yeah. Yeah. Middle, uh, middle child, and then we have Buzz Aldrin and uh, the late Dave Carradine, uh, David Carradine, Doc, Bernie Scapelli from The Love Boat, you know. Uh, David Carradine, that's the Kung Fu. Kung Fu guy oh, that yeah, killed yeah. himself, unfortunately. Oh. You know, yeah, it, it, they're, yeah, they're still looking into that. That's tough, yeah, yeah. you know. That, that was a bad, bad situation in life. So, but he was, you know, he was part of it. Uh, Law and Order people, uh, uh, Ruth Buzzy, uh, Phyllis Diller. Uh, you just see so many people there. Just it's it just so nice to be embraced by them. Did you see Phyllis Diller? Uh, we didn't physically, but yeah. the people that were taping got to see a lot of them. You know, you, you right. don't get to you don't get to press the flesh too much. I mean, right. the the ones that we spent time like um, uh, Kevin Dobson. He used to play uh, on Kojak when the brown hair and Telly Savalas would go. Here's looking at you, kid. He would be talking to you know. He was a detective there, right. and then he went to. Um, uh, Knott's Landing, he was the... I know, you know all these, I'm old. I know, <laughs> I know. that's why I say, you know, we can, we can relate to that. You know, yeah. I tell people these days, you know, some of the younger kids, it's like, what was that? Is that an old show? Yeah. Yes, it's a very old show. But, yeah, yeah. you know, he's been to our house a few times. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of movie stars and actors and actresses and awards and invitations to the White House. And, well, I was just going to say, know. moving on from Hollywood to something very similar, let's go to the White House. Sure, we've yeah. been to uh, Washington and down into the White House uh, five times under two different presidents. Nice. And it, you know, we're not we're not Republican or Democrat. We no. save everybody. You right. know, um, uh, we've been invited down there, and it, it's been a it, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, you know, we signed the Amber Alert Bill in the Rose Garden oh, with nice. uh, President Bush at that time, and. Uh, there were so many different dignitaries there sitting next to you. You're sitting around looking at all these, you know, people. You know, you're you're in a George's apparel suit in out of Manchester. You got two suits <laughs> for you know the same price, and you're thinking this is snazzy. Hey, you're gonna you look know, good. You're I gonna look it. good, yeah, right? You know, and then the guy next to you has got a you know eight thousand dollars suit. You know, you're like, oh, okay, well, but it didn't matter yeah, because no. you know what? We do better. That's yeah. how we feel. We save kids. You know, it, it doesn't matter the money. It doesn't matter the prestige. It matters, mm -hmm. you know, when you see that 21-year-old that went through your program when he was eight, and now he's, he, he's able to come forward and tell people what happened to him. And, you know, th yeah. that, that's, that's what comes. Well, let me ask you a silly question. Sure. Have you talked to people who are, uh, program uh, those games, uh, like uh, for, for kids? For instance, oh. um, uh, you know how you get to Mario Brothers sure. and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, we're, we're looking. That, that's our next step. You know, that... That is 2012. 2012, we are going to take a very serious approach to expansion of Little Iguana. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to take the brand, we're going to all the content that we have for over 17 years, all the award-winning stuff, we're going to turn it into a, um, a corporate side for being able to expand and attract money to, to grow, right. you know, because realistically, 
you know, we do this all ourselves. And, and it does you know, cost money. It costs a lot of money. Right. I mean, when you're handing out 10,000 items at an event, I mean, people think that those just materialized, right. you know, they don't realize it's a lot of money. I mean, just getting color copies or, or black and white copies, I mean, it, it's a lot of money. And right. so this is why we know we can do a lot more. And so we're going to offer that. We're, we have a, a lawyer who's going to set that up and expand it with us and grow it with us. So, okay, so your, yeah. your envision is, is definitely to get this uh, uh, out there. And uh, yeah. that, that seems to me... Become the Barney. You know, become right. the... Become the next Barney or the next uh, Sesame Street, but with a conscience. Right. You know, a conscious related organization, you know, something that makes a difference, but still can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. People can share in it. People that want to come in and take part in it can share in it and be part of it with us, right. you know. Um, it doesn't make them bad people that, that they want to make money. It just helps our cause and, to and, expand and, it. And you don't have to apologize for that for one second. This is America. Well, you know, it took us when we were... Just don't go to the Wall Streeters. We, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> huh? I mean, when you, when, you, when you have a nonprofit group and the, right. and the guy who runs it makes $100 million because somebody flew some planes into a building or something. I mean, come on, you know. I mean, mm. that's not nonprofit, you know. Right. But this is... You know, we, we just need to change the world, and we finally got over that hump. We, we now realize that with the expansion, there's so much good we can do. There's millions, right. literally tens of millions of kids that we can save, and that's our goal. Do you, uh, as far as your responses to the programs, are you getting back feedback from, from kids from, uh, in letter forms? Or I, I know that you've gotten a lot of awards and stuff, but do people just stop by and say, you know, a few years ago, yeah. you know, I, I, I saw you. And or I saw I, I was part of the iguana. I saw the iguana, and uh, I, I know I know somehow in our conversation we've talked about some people saying I, I remember that. But are, are you able to track over all the events? Are you able to track some of the uh, success stories that you've had? Sure, uh, we 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 do track some of them. There's so many yeah. that you know people call and. I guess you could expose, you use it, you know, you can, you know, bring it on. But what we do is something that you don't want to bring light to in this world so right. much. I mean, yes, we have the letters. We've been, you know, we've been in front of the president of the United States, which you really can't get it much higher than, you right. know, that because of what we did and the children that we saved. And, um, you know, you, you really just need to keep what we do low key from, you don't go out and, you know, we didn't save a puppy, you know, right. we didn't save a kitten from a tree. You know, we saved children from some really bad things that right. you don't need to have them rehashed at, for our benefit. Right. You know, the, nobody needs to pat us on the back. We know what we do. You know, we know what we're going to get when, when everything is done in life. You know, we know where we'll be. And that is how we live our life, to look out for the, for the best interest of, of these children. And talk about a little bit more about this uh, event coming up the 25th one more time. February 25th at Nashua South High School. It's uh, Family Fun Day 2012. It's uh, all kinds of, you know, jump houses and uh, football toss and basketball toss and hockey shootout. We have, you know, people from the Monarchs and people from uh, the New Hampshire racetrack, you know, um, Milo. We have characters. We have... Um, tons of games, Lego race car, you know, contest, uh, uh, prizes to give away for all the kids that take part in a scavenger hunt. Every single table, every business that comes will be doing a craft for a child. It could be a Fruit Loop necklace or it could be a spinning wheel or some sort of activity. So when they show up from 9 to 3 all day long, all they do is have fun. Oh, and they're going to be trapped nice. inside anyways. It's February, right. <laughs> you know, so it's the Saturday of uh, our school vacation week. So we, we wanted to give something for people to do. Is there a fee to get inside? It's a goodwill offer. You know, it's like everything we do. I mean, we don't set pricing on anything. We, you want to come in, you want to give us a couple of bucks. Right. Great. If you don't, you don't have it. How many sponsors okay. do you have? Well, we just started, actually, and um, we, we just started planning this because the city gave us permission to utilize the school, and um, we started last week, and we've, we've got a few sponsors. Actually, City of Nashua, uh, uh, Mayor Lozo came in, and uh, she wants the city to help out, so she's, nice. she came. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, we have um, 
uh, Sylvan Learning Center that, that came right. in. You know, we have uh, Bob's Discount Furniture. Actually, Bob's Discount Furniture always helps us. Uh, Bob, um, Bob loves what we do, and Kathy Poulin, the, the girl you always see on TV, right. she'll probably be there. She, she wanted to come up and take part in this event. So we, we do have quite a few sponsors that are going to come in and take part. And we also are looking for some. Sure. So, so, you, you know, if, 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 a, if a business wants to get in front of, you know, three or 4,000 families, this is, this is it, you know. Should they call your phone or go to the website? Oh, sure. Uh, they can go to the website. They can go call the office. Say uh, the website again. Oh, the, the website is www.liligu-anausa.org, O-R-G. Or they can just call the office at 603-881-9805 and uh, let us know. We're looking for vendors that would like to be part of, you know, at the tables and, and, and meet all the families and give them a craft to do and sponsor, the, you know, and, and promote their business. I mean, obviously, it's great for businesses. To, it's a win-win. Yeah, it's a captive audience. And, right. you know, you're trying to reach out to kids and families. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> right. I really want to thank you for coming on the show. I thank you for and, having uh, me. And God bless, and uh, may uh, you continue uh, and with great success. Yeah, and I hope the show continues as well. Thank you so okay. much. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us for another week of Gate City Chronicles. And until next week, remember, it's your city. Good night.